conquest. The search for new knowledge about our universe, our world, and ourselves. Hello, class. Hello. What's your name? I'm Lydia. Nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Harlow. Katie. Okay. Nice to meet you, Katie. Take a seat. Dr. Harlow, what is love? Well, you know, kids, love is a funny thing with many components. I, too, had that same question. Let me tell you a story. Back in Nam, I mean the lab, a few of my colleagues observed our infant monkeys would become attached to their cloth pee pads. They would cling to them and throw fits whenever they were taken to be cleaned. The cloth wasn't providing any basic survival need. Why did these monkeys then become so emotionally attached? I was on my way to discovering that love and affection may be built in basic needs that are just as strong as, or even stronger than those, of hunger or thirst. I hypothesized that infant monkeys must have some basic need for close contact with something soft and comforting in addition to primary biological needs such as hunger and thirst. One way to begin to uncover the components of the love between an infant and mother would be to place infants in situations where the mother does not provide for all of the infant's needs and where various components of the environment can be scientifically manipulated. To test my hypothesis, we built surrogate mothers to care for the infants. The first surrogate mother we built consisted of a smooth wooden body covered in sponge rubber and terry cloth. It was equipped with a breast-like structure in the chest area that delivered milk, and the body contained a light bulb inside to give off warmth. We then constructed a different kind of surrogate mother that was less able to pro provide so soft comfort. This mother was made of wire mesh shaped about the same as the wooden frame, so that an infant monkey c could cling to it as to the cloth mother. This wire mother came equipped with a working nursing breast device and also was able to provide warmth. In other words, the wire mother was identical to the cloth mother in every way except for the ability to offer what Harlow called contact comfort. I was attempting to separate the influence of feeding from the influence of contact comfort on the monkey's behavior toward the mother. The monkeys were then placed in their cages and the amount of time they spent in their direct contact with each mother was recorded for the first five months of their lives. The results were astonishing. These needs appeared to exert a relatively insignificant influence on the monkey's choice of a mother. Instead, a fundamental need for contact comfort was a most significant in producing an attachment between an infant and its mother. After the first few days of adjustment, all the monkeys, regardless of which mother had the milk, were spending nearly all their time each day on the cloth mother. Even those monkeys feeding from the wire mother would only leave the comfort of the cloth mother to nurse briefly and then return immediately to the cloth-covered surrogate. The infants feeding from the wire mother did not digest the milk as well and experienced frequent bouts of diarrhea. This suggests that the lack of the soft mother was psychologically stressful to these infants. During the time of the study, we performed open field tests. This involved placing the young monkeys in different situations. Common knowledge tells us that when children are afraid, they will seek out the comfort of their mothers. To find out how the young monkeys with the wire and cloth mothers would respond in each situation, I placed in their cages objects that caused a fearful reaction, such as, such as a giant chomping monster. The results of provided additional evidence of the young monkey's attachment to the cloth mother. When the monkeys were faced with something frightening, they would run to the cloth mother and cling to it for comfort and protection. As the monkeys aged, this response became even stronger. It made no difference whether a monkey had received its milk from the wire or the cloth mother. When afraid, they all ran to the security of the soft, cloth-covered mother. Another study we performed included putting the infants in unfamiliar room containing various objects such as a wooden blocks, blankets, containers with lids, and a folded piece of paper. Under normal conditions, monkeys like to play with and manipulate these objects. The monkeys who were raised with both the cloth and wire mothers were placed in the room with either the cloth mother present, no mother present, or the wire mother present. The idea here the idea here was to examine the tendency of the young monkeys to adapt 
to and explore the strange situation with or without the presence of the mother. Finally, Harlow wanted to find out if the attachments formed between the monkeys and their surrogate mothers would persist after periods of separation. When the monkeys reached six months of age and were on solid food diets, they were separated for short periods from the surrogate mother and then reunited in the open field situation. In the last part of the study, the monkeys were separated from the mother for various periods of time after they stopped nursing and were on solid food, food diets. After the longest separation, when the monkeys were reunited with the cloth mother in the same open field situation, the monkeys rushed to the mother, climbed on it, clutched it tightly, and rubbed their heads and faces on its body. They then played with a surrogate mother, which included biting and tearing at the cloth cover. The main difference was that the monkeys did not leave the mother to explore and play with the objects in the room as they had done before. Apparently, according to Harlow, the need for contact comfort was greatly was greater than the natural tendency for exploration. It should be pointed out, however, that these reunions were brief and more expl exploration may have occurred if the sessions had been extended. She won't stop crying. Take some milk. Oh shoot! Like I'm so late for work. Um. example we have the child the mother with the baby and she's nurturing the baby giving it food loving on it singing to it and then when but once they grow up sometimes nurturing it is a little bit too much and the child had attachment issues in leaving the mother in order to go to school in the second example we had Sam who was I was acting as a playing the role of a mother giving it its basic needs but not necessarily nurturing it or giving it that kind of love it needed as a child so when he went to school, he had no problem leaving his mom and was much more embarrassed to leave to have his mom there than to have her there. So you tell me, what is love? 